Okay, in this video we're going to go ahead and talk about parallel lines and transversals. This is an absolutely critical um, concept in geometry. So uh, generally you start studying this at the high school level, high school geometry. You've probably maybe seen some of this at the middle school uh, level, but it, this is really, really important stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. And let's first just define a, a few things here. So let's talk about parallel lines, okay? So I have three lines here. So in geometry, you can kind of name them with these lower case uh, um, variables here, L, M, and T. There's other ways to uh, name lines, but I'm not gonna get into that in this video. But lines L and M, okay, here they appear, they appear to be parallel. Now, I'm using that word very carefully. Appear means they look to be what? Well, they don't look like they're they're kind of running side by side. That's what that word means, parallel. It means that two lines kind of running side by side and they'll never intersect. So just visually here, they appear to, uh, to be, in fact, parallel. However, in mathematics, we cannot assume, based upon the way a figure looks, that two lines are parallel. You have to actually uh, very specifically state that. So the ways we can do that is we can say L is parallel to M. Line L is parallel to M. That's one way of doing it. Another way you can do it is you can see a another arrow here on the line and you put another one down here. Okay, so this indicates that these two lines are parallel. Without these uh, this notation or this notation, we cannot um, assume that these two lines would be parallel. Now, everything I'm going to talk to you about here, uh, and I'll get into transversals in a second, depends upon these two lines, in fact, being parallel. And then there's a whole range of properties that um, that follow from that. But tests like the SAT and the SAT, uh, ACT, they like to kind of quiz students. Sometimes they'll draw a figure that the lines look parallel, but in fact, they didn't state that. Then students kind of assume, oh, those are parallel lines. They'll work it out, and then they'll get the problem wrong. And they're kind of set up <laughs> that way. So just be careful, right? So um, you got to, in fact, uh, look to see that the lines are, in fact, stated parallel. Now, let's get, let's get into this a little bit further. So if you have two parallel lines, two or more, in fact, but we're just going to stick with two, and you have another line that kind of crosses through it, like our line T here, this line T would be referred to as a transversal, okay? So parallel line and transversal, okay? And you can have one or more transversals. We're just going to stick with one here. Now, in this case, if you have uh, parallel lines and a transversal, and this is the most basic setup here, a lot of neat properties take care of uh, or kind of come into play. And these are actual um, angle relationships. So... Let's go ahead and just talk about a whole bunch here. It's something that you absolutely need to know, and uh, there's a lot of problems. Um, in other words, like on your final exam, your chapter test, or SAT, ACT, GED, whatever the case is, that are that I'm sure are going to, in fact, test you on your knowledge of these angle relationships. They're not hard, but there are many. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go through these. And I'll race and we'll just, you know, kind of go through them one by one. So the first are vertical angles. So this angle and this angle here, okay, if you kind of look, they kind of look the same. Well, they are. They're called vertical angles, okay? Now, there are many pairs of vertical angles here, right? This here and this here. There's another pair of vertical angles. Vertical angles. And over here as well, these two here are vertical angles, Vertical angles, vertical angles, uh, vertical angles, and vertical angles. So vertical angles really don't have anything to do, in fact, with the parallel line condition. In other words, if I have a line and another line that kind of chopped through this way, these are uh, vertical angles are formed, okay? And vertical angles are congruent. Now, the word congruent just means that they're equal. So all these angles here would be equal to one another. So we can kind of specify that. And actually, what I'm going to do, you're going to do it this way. We'll give these angles some names. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So let's kind of just kind of go down here. We'll say vertical angles. Where are vertical angles? Angle one and four, right? So angle one is congruent 
two angle four why are these two angles equal to one another because they're vertical angles so in, in geometry and mathematics you have to have a justification you just can't be like well they kind of look like they're equal no well in fact they're vertical angles that's why they're equal and so we can list the rest of them real quick angle two is congruent to angle three and we'll just do the rest here real quick five and eight angle five is congruent to angle eight and angle seven is congruent to angle six. Okay, so those are all vertical angles. Now let's move on to some other, uh, I'm gonna get into some things like alternate tier angles and all that stuff. Maybe if you're watching this video, you probably already know a little bit about that. We'll kind of hold on. Let's kind of take care of some of the more fundamentals. So the vertical angles are fundamentals. Now. Straight lines are also considered angles. So like angle three and four is what we call a straight line. Okay, they're also supplementary, which means they add up to 180. So from here, you might say, well, this is an angle because there's like a bend in it, right? Well, what if I happens if I just kind of keep opening that bend up more and more and finally I open it up all the way, there's a straight line. You, you might be saying to yourself, well, the angle disappeared. <laughs> well, no, the angle didn't disappear. There's still an actual angle here, right? The angle of a straight line is 180 degrees, okay? So any two angles that make up, if you add them or basically are adjacent, that add up to 180 degrees, you know, they form a straight line angle, okay? They're also supplementary. So we can kind of build out some additional angle relationships here. So let's kind of do this here. So let's say straight line, for example, or supplementary. So we can say angle three plus angle four is equal to what? 180 degrees, All right? Now there's a whole bunch of these straight line relationships here. Let me kind of erase this. So you probably have already seen many more. You probably say, well, seven and eight, five and six, one and two, and you'd be correct but also this way as well, one and three, okay? So one and three are supplementary, so angle one plus angle three is 180 degrees, and so forth. We can go on and on. Angle two plus angle four, 180 degrees. Let's see here. Now we have three and four, angle one and two. Angle one plus angle two is 180 degrees. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, I'm not going to list out the rest of them, but basically the same angles as we did in the bottom pair are going to apply to the top pair. Okay, so all of these straight line angles, this way, this way, this way, this way, they're all supplementary. They all add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so now let's get into some additional angle properties. Now. Before we get into the next pair, I want to kind of um, uh, just denote a few things here. When we have parallel lines, we consider these angles here, these angles here, okay, inside the lines as interior angles, okay, interior angles. So these would be exterior angles, these guys here, but five, six, three, and four would be considered interior angles, okay? So I'm going to be using the notation here, interior, and I'm also going to be using, well, let me just do it this way, um, that angles on opposite side of the transversal would be alternating, okay? That's that word, alternating, okay? So we have interior and alternating. Alternating are angles on our opposite side of the transversal, and interior are those angles that are inside the lines, okay? So with that being said, let me kind of scroll down here a little bit, give ourselves some room. Let's talk about the properties between angles five and six. So what would we, how would we classify them? Well, they're interior angles and are also, also alternating angles. So we talk, we, we describe these as alternate interior angles. Okay, so alternate interior angles, if you look here, angles five and angle six, they appear to be what? Congruent, the same angle, if you kind of look at them closely, and in fact, they are. Now, this is only true if these two lines are parallel, okay? If they're not parallel, then we can't make these um, 
these claims, okay? But in this case, we can. So angle five is congruent to angle four, and angle three is congruent to angle six, okay? Why? Because they're alternate interior angles. And I'm going to give you kind of, uh, some example problems here uh, in a second, but let's just go and list all these out. So we have alternate interior angles. Now, we also have, let's say, these guys. What, would we, what do you think we'd call these, these pairs together? Okay. What we call those same side interior angles. So same side interior angles... They have a kind of a unique relationship. So let's say angle three plus angle five. The deal with these guys is they are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees, okay? So angle four and angle six, all right, those are also same side interior angles. Angle four plus angle six, and they also add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so let's just quickly review what do we got so far. We got vertical angles, straight line angles, alternate, alternating uh, interior angles, and we have uh, same side interior angles, okay? And now we have another um, angle relationship, and that is going to be corresponding angles, corresponding angles. So corresponding angles are pretty cool. What they, they look like is this. Let's take a look at angle one. So can you find another angle that looks like angle one? Pretty much looks like the same angle measure. Well, if you look kind of closely here, angle five does, okay? So it's kind of like in the same relative position. If you kind of look at it, this kind of corresponds to this. Well, corresponding angles, again, all of this is predicated that the two lines were, that the, that the angles being formed are from two lines that are uh, parallel and are transversal. So everything I'm stating here with the exception of vertical angles and straight line angles uh, um, depend upon the two lines being parallel. Okay, so corresponding angles are congruent. So that would be angle one. There's a whole bunch of these guys. Angle one is congruent to angle five. And let me just stop here again. I know I'm kind of interjecting here. We use the word congruent. Uh, actually, I got to put the, the word, well, no, equal to 180. That's fine. Congruency in geometry is meaning that, that uh, we don't like to use the word equal. Well, then you can kind of use it, but technically you're supposed to be congruent. That means they have the same angle measure, okay? Where the equal sign is usually when values, like in algebra, like x equals three or something like that. Then we'd like to use the equal sign. But when we're talking about angle measure or the the length of segments, then you need to use the, the congruent symbol, okay? So angle one is congruent to angle five corresponding angles and then we can see three and seven got a whole bunch let's go list them out here angle three is congruent to angle seven and then on this side we have angle two is congruent to angle six and let's see here angle four is congruent to angle eight okay I think that pretty much covers most of uh, of the angles being formed here, okay, with parallel lines and a transversal. All right, so knowing this, let's take a look at kind of like a typical kind of problem that you're going to see in your geometry course or on any other type of exam, okay? So let's suppose um, I'm given... Uh, Let's say A, B, C, D, E. Let's call this uh, 30 degrees. Let's call this Y. And let's call this um, F. Okay, so you might be asked to find all the angles here, okay? all the, the value of the variables. So you're saying, well, I only got one angle here, but it's actually pretty simple, okay? So let's just start with angle A, okay? So how can we find the value of this guy right here? Well, pretty simple, actually. Um, the way you can think about it is that these two guys, angle A plus angle 30 is equal to what? It's a straight line angle. That's equal to 180 degrees. So A plus 30 
is equal to 180. You can solve this basic equation. So A is equal to 150. Okay. 150 degrees. It's very simple, right? So this is 150 because 150 plus 30 has got to make up this entire straight line. So now, now knowing that, you can be like, oh, okay, these two are vertical angles right here. These two right here are vertical angles. So B must also be equal to 150. Okay, but why? Because they're vertical angles. And so is Y. Y and 30 vertical angles. So we can put a little 30 degrees right here. And now we could just keep going down the line. So we got 50 right here. Well, E, angle E, and 150 are corresponding angles. So this has got to be 150. And C and 30 are also co corresponding angles. And there's different ways you can actually um, approach these. There's a ton of different ways. Uh, you know, options sometimes, not all the times, but properties that you can use to apply here. And then E and D are vertical angles, so this has got to be 150. C and F are vertical angles, so this has got to be 30. D and these are corresponding, and then boom, there you're all done. Now, sometimes they'll have like, like fancier algebraic expressions in there. You might have to set up equations, but this stuff is really not that difficult if you know how to do basic, solve basic algebra equations. And most importantly, understand the angle relationships, you can get these problems right. But um, a couple things, again, to stress, especially um, for those of you that are, are taking tests. As I've seen this definitely like on the SAT or the ACT. They'll try to kind of fool you that say you know, that the figures look to be one way, but in fact, they draw the figure to kind of mislead you. Okay, they're looking for your ability to, to, to actually see that a fact that, you know, a certain condition exists. So this condition here that we need to be mindful of is parallel, okay? These two lines are sometimes the, the arrows look like this. This is parallel, okay? So these two lines are parallel because we have this or this, okay? If it doesn't have that, then you can't make that assumption. All right, so kind of a quick crash course on parallel lines and transversals but if you understand this much trust me you're going to you're going to do pretty well on these kind of angle relationship problems and they do come up everywhere so anyways if you enjoyed the video please uh, subscribe I do a ton of these kind of uh, videos on my channel maybe give this a thumbs up and let me know how things are going with you in um, in your mathematics journey and if you have a question or whatnot I try to read as uh, many comments as possible and, and do some of this uh some of these free videos. Um, just very quickly, my background is I'm a math teacher teaching for many, many years, middle school, high school, and beyond. And I really kind of enjoy putting a lot of uh, free material out there. But my aim is to really give kind of like real uh, quick reviews on some of the most important things that students really have to understand. It's all important. But if you understand at least this much, you're going to go a, a long way. You don't have to understand everything to do pretty well in math but if you there are some things you absolutely have to understand at a, at a you know and this is one of them if you absolutely understand the, the fundamentals here you'll do pretty well with this subject okay so best luck to you